Hello, and welcome to the Go There, Do That podcast. This is where my wife Heather and I talk about different aspects of our adventuring or travels. Um, We both really do appreciate the things that we have seen and done. So the point of this podcast is just to share in our experiences, and hopefully, if you're listening, you can take something away too. Oh, and keep We also have... O'Malley with us today, which is our um, dog. He's sitting next to me, so you might hear some dog noises. Um, and we also have Cece and Smoosh hanging around somewhere. Uh, those are our two cats. So could be some random noises and distractions throughout this, but... But that's showbiz. <laughs> uh, so our topic today is organization. So Heather is the mastermind behind most of the organizational efforts. So we're going to kind of walk through the process of planning a trip. How the heck do you plan it? What are the different sort of categories we have for certain trips? Uh, Is it in the van, the van, or a plane? And also the part about coming home. That is, it is important to be just as organized on the road as you are at home, too, because you will be having to come back to the house that you left. So we're going to get into all that right now by first question being, how do we decide where we're going on trips? Heather. Um... Well, really before we decide where, now there are are a few instances where you've like kind of made a request like for Yosemite Firefalls, Um, like I knew you wanted to do that and it can only be a certain time of year, but typically I kind of look at the time we have to work with and then I figure out where from there. So for example, it's usually easier to swing a trip around like Thanksgiving or Christmas because you have some like bonus vacation days that you're not having to take from your, you know, bank of vacation days. So from there, honestly, I usually just Google like best places to visit in November. Um, Sometimes I have to narrow it down for like staying in the States because We've, we have visited Europe, but that's not like a typical trip. So upon Googling that, you know, it's going to have a lot of really amazing options like tropical islands and, you know, all that stuff. But so sometimes I have to do a, another search of best places to visit in November in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just simply using Google, looking through a list <laughs> of things on those helpful articles yes. and then being like, can we do that place. Yeah. And yeah. I'll go look at a couple of blogs, mm-hmm. uh, kind of look at the highlights and then, and then I'll start looking into what that would look like. So if it, it's a trip where we know that we're going to utilize the van, then, you know, we're probably not going to be going to, uh, I don't know, Alaska or something during that time of year, but also we're probably not going to go there in the van anyways at this point in our lives. Cause it takes four whole days to drive in the van there. Um, so then I kind of have to think about if it's the kind of trip where we're going to drive the van or fly. Mm-hmm. Before we talk about the differences between those two uh-huh. types of trips, I was just thinking about how there should be like, a dating app, but for places for you to go. So you like match, Mm. give information, but you match with the place. So it's like, I like this, this, and this. And it's like, oh, you have a match. It's Yosemite National Park. Yeah. I don't know. There might be something out there like that already. And if there's not, you just gave away your idea. So hopefully hopefully you can make it before this podcast airs. Well, free idea, because I don't want to make an app. Well, honestly, you can... You probably use, like, AI for that now. Oh, yeah. You know. How? Well, you could prompt it, like, start with best places to visit in November, and then it gives you a list, and then you narrow it down from there, like, that are 
warm mm. or that are within 500 miles of Austin, Texas or whatever. All these lost opportunities because of AI. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk about... But it would be cool, like, I'm imagining, like, swiping right or left That's on, like, a location. When you were, I was imagining you scrolling through... Yeah. The top 15 places or whatever, and you're like, mm, no, I'm not an no. extensive researcher, so no. it's like the two first two articles I read. Well, so that's <laughs> the place you're going yeah. is not the most important part about the adventure. It is a very important part, maybe half, half mm. as important mm. as the journey you're going, you know. Oh, yeah. I was wondering what you're going to say. The what most is not part. about the destination, it's about the journey. Yeah. Get that tattooed on me somewhere. Yeah. Just kidding. Not going to do that. Plane or van? The How do you plan for each one? That's what I'm trying to ask you right now. Okay. So let's start with van. What goes into planning a big van road trip? Okay. Um, honestly, for either trip, I'm going to start a spreadsheet immediately. Um, and On what? Uh, just Google Sheets. Google Sheets, Easy. though. Yeah. Freaking the sheets. Google Sheets, I mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a coffee mug that you have. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my friends know my obsession. Um, and then I kind of make like a calendar um, with the sheet of like each day once I figured out where we're going. So for a van trip specifically, um, I would, I have to figure out the route. That's kind of the most important thing. So once I know where we're going, like, Literally, how are we going to get there? What is the route to get there? And then I kind of think about uh, the places to stop along the way, how long that we realistically want to drive each day, and then I use that to map out a plan for where um, we might stay. If it's somewhere farther, um, like Yosemite, for example, in California is quite a ways from us, a full 24-hour drive. Um, so I kind of try to, even if it takes a little bit longer, I try to look at like where we can stop along the way to make the most of that journey. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not just beelining for Yosemite usually, which sometimes makes our trips like fast and furious feeling. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, yeah, along the way though, are there like scenic viewpoints or mm -hmm. something? It was like, oh, that's a cool thing in this state. Yeah. Like. Or, like, the big trip that I planned in December 21 with mm -hmm. the national parks. Like, we visited... The original plan was to visit... Ten. Ten mm -hmm. national parks. Um, our plans did have to change because of the weather, but we still visited eight. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of... Like, we were going to Yosemite, but there's all these different places that you can kind of see along that route. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, planning, planning a route. And yeah. I don't like to go, I don't like to come back the same way mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. went mm -hmm. with yes. the van. Yeah. You're driving a whole way back. You don't want to see the same thing twice. Yeah. Maybe just the other side of it, you yeah. know, but still. Well, I guess for like a longer trip like that, like if, when we just go to Big Bend um, this Thanksgiving, like I'm okay with just driving there and back in the same route because well, that's Bend, different. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of Texas between yeah. us and that. Yeah. And I've seen quite a bit of it. Yeah. Texas yeah. is great. This is getting out of the state while driving is an exhausting process. Yeah. So. Yeah. It is, it is great. It does have a lot of cool things. Mm-hmm. But it's just a lot of it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a van trip, i say on, like, my end, because I just worry about, like, the camera mm -hmm. documentation side of it. But I always try to the rule that I'm now making, but I think it's just a smart thing. Like everything, the camera wise needs to be able to fit in one bag and go with me everywhere, which mm -hmm. I normally like do. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, it needs to all fit in one single package, the mm -hmm. gear that I bring, mm -hmm. because with the van, it's like easy to just sort of keep more food, more supplies and stuff. Yeah. In it, like that's something that your we don't have camera to. equipment needs to be condensed. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have but, to like eat. But we do. It is beneficial to our cost if we, because van trips are 
usually cheaper economical yeah yeah yeah. because it's just gas and then a ten dollar a night campsite yeah Yeah. so that's kind of crazy Mm -hmm. but yeah van trips are efficient what we're doing um when we are um just kind of coasting yeah yeah Mm -hmm. it's a good thing to coast with yeah (laughs) um but yeah that's that's the fun of van life planning well i have more to say about that's like one piece of it that is just one section sorry i misspoke one section of it what else you got um so for a van trip after i figure out um that i'm figuring out where we're gonna stay along that route as well so i'll start booking like campsites or figuring out a place that we can like boondock um and things like that but i like to figure out pretty soon in the planning process, where we're going to stay. I don't like leaving that up to chance too much. Um, No. Yeah. And then plus, like, a lot of times it's places that might be a little more popular and you do need to book in advance, Um, like for Yosemite. You know, we're not just going to – you're not likely going to be able to show up and just, like, get a campsite. So I like to know that I have a place to stay. You know, I was just thinking – Maybe the whole, this is what I used to do, Mm -hmm. the whole YOLO side of things where you're just like, well, let's figure it out when we get there. Mm -hmm. I think that is just a coping mechanism for being disorganized where you're just like, for sure. I really don't know how to book it. So I'm just going to say, I'm, this is what I used to do. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm the kind of person that just goes with the flow Mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But But you're disorganized. That was me. Yeah. I mean, I'm still that way, but you know, I have you to help teach me how yes. to be those, yeah. to how to be organized. And that's that's something I'm learning is that you do have the capability. Like I don't just have to take it all on myself. Oh. But it's just a matter of like showing you how to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's just certain things you aren't taught or didn't practice. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. And that is a very important part, especially if you want to do things mm-hmm. away from your house. Yeah. Well, I've yeah. not, I've definitely not always been organized. Like, oh yeah, we were just talking the other day, like you were, you were saying how your backpack was always like oh. crazy and messy, oh. but like I used to get in trouble for like my desk and my backpack in my room. Like it always looked like a bomb went off in it. It was a disaster zone. Mm-hmm. And I eventually like learned that that wouldn't be okay because I was like getting in trouble for it. Not just from like my parent, my parents, you know, were normal parents about it. Like keep your room clean, mm-hmm. nothing over the top. But like even at school, like I was getting in trouble and it was like embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And so I eventually just like made myself figure out how to organize things and for me it's like everything has to have like a place or a compartment and like be broken down like that's why Mm -hmm. I plan the trips like I do because I cannot wing it yeah so you were referring to a meme that I had sent you Mm -hmm. about backpacks and it said the people who just toss their papers and folders or papers into their backpack without folders Mm -hmm. what how are y'all right now or something Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna say it it was like a funny tweet yeah like how are you doing yeah Yeah. and so heather said would it surprise you if if i said that that was me Mm -hmm. so what made you come around what made you realize from those dirty backpack days to to now it was like a slow process getting getting there just over time yeah maybe one folder purchased And then you slowly move on to Google Sheets. Yeah. 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 Mostly like um, embarrassment. Yeah. Yeah. So I just like figured it out. Yeah. 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 See, this is the thing. I always consider my brain to be more organized than my uh, environment. Everyday environment. Mm -hmm. Because it's just about, for me, it's about things just not bothering me. But. Just this last weekend, we, like, spent time organizing all... Because if you just keep moving things, too, eventually you're just so jostled, you look back at whatever you're trying to do, and it's like, oh, this just moved. It never, like, had a place ever. Yeah. It just kind of shifted positions until now I'm like, oh, it's all in this 
five, six cardboard boxes or something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was, sometimes that's all it takes is just somebody to be like, hey, I can help you with this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, here's what you probably should do mm-hmm. in order to put all this away, you know? And, yeah. But I organized it. You were just there to like. Yeah, it was a good like marriage exercise for mm-hmm. us uh, to basically. It was finally time for Ethan to like organize his uh, video equipment that is, has been moved to uh, one of our like extra closets, mm-hmm. and it had all been moved, but it was literally just like placed mm-hmm. in there and. You know, video equipment has a lot of little ins and outs. Little tiny cables. Little tiny, like millions of things Mm -hmm. for you to do. And so, yeah, it was like a test of like patience and like understanding. But I think we did a good job because I just kind of sat there and helped when you needed it. Mm -hmm. But you honestly did organize it yourself. Yeah. Because you would be like, well, this is audio stuff. So, and like you would start putting it together and like making an audio pile. Yeah. Where like mo, like maybe a year or so ago, I would have been like, just make an audio pile, mm-hmm. make a memory card pile, do this. Mm-hmm. Like I would be taking over. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, it's still my organization system and not yours. So you're mm-hmm. not going to use it. Yeah. Anyways, and then eventually Ooh. I would get frustrated because you like don't get the system or I reach a point where I don't understand what the tool is and so I don't know how to organize it and then I blow up and get frustrated, but you did it all. You don't blow up. It's just you might walk out. <laughs> My blow up is quiet, yeah. If I'm like, "Oh, I don't know what I'm doing over and over again." And you're just like, "All right, then take your time and mm-hmm. tell me when you know." Yeah. yeah. Like that's what blowing up would be. Yeah. Except removing yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're, this is a round of applause for Ethan for yeah. organizing his stuff. Well, I was saying we were just always moving all the time and we never had like a place for these things that I've just been accumulating over the last like 10 years, 10 years yeah. of my life. And so yeah. it's like, where does all of it go? Yeah. Oh, you mean like in general? Because we've... We've been moving. This is the longest we've lived somewhere. hmm Yeah. Yeah. That's so, true. So, yes. That's what I meant. I'm going to refer to organizing your home life is good to have mm-hmm. an organized traveling life. hmm Because next is... Pl- I'm not done talking about... Oh, I'm... I guess I'm done talking about the It's man. so extensive. It's very extensive. I just take little breaks. So, we had first... The route, right? Yes. And then the inside, we have a lot more efficient. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, we can take more food. We can take more supplies with us on a van trip. Mm-hmm. What's next? Um, so next, I would start thinking about, like, what equipment we might need or gear for a trip like that. Like, when mm. we went to Yosemite, I had to make sure that snow we chain. had, like, snow chains. Um, mm-hmm. We invested in, like, an air compressor. Mm-hmm. because, you know, in case something yeah. like that were... I notice there's a little thing for where we put the snow chains. Well, if we bring, you know, like O'Malley or something, that's where the dog food goes. Yeah. So it's like an interchangeable... He's not, he's not usually on a snow chains trip. Not this extreme stuff. Though. Yeah, yeah. He would hate it, but... So it does yeah. change. Like, the place that we organize things and store things changes depending on what the trip is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For and there's sure. little places and there's open cabinets for that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll mm-hmm. start planning like what food we can bring, like grocery lists because there is like a fridge in the van. Mm-hmm. So and um, then, of course, we can bring like dry food. Um, and then depending on how long the trip is, I've like researched where we can find a grocery store, like making sure and that we're going to be in our city. Um, and then also like filling up propane along the route, especially if we're staying, like if we're staying somewhere where it's going to be cold, Mm -hmm. you know, got to make sure that we have somewhere to fill that up. Um, we didn't know this on the trip, but now I know if we go on a trip, as long as the one for the national parks extravaganza thing, it was like four, over 4,000 miles we drove. 
and we had to like get an oil change. Oh yeah. During the trip because in Vegas. Yeah, we were like pushing it. Mm -hmm. And so now I know to plan for that along a route too, if it's going to be a longer one like that or with a lot of miles. Or you can get the super oil that lasts twice as long. Oh, I didn't know that was an option. When they, they offer you all the super mm. premium, it's like this one will last you 6,000 miles instead yeah. of three. Which is another thing yeah. on a van trip. Like we always mm -hmm. make sure that the van's all good to go and serviced before oh we gosh. leave. So yeah. it's like has an oil change. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we're dealing with like recalls so we mm -hmm. want to make sure all those are fixed before we're going on a trip which they'll all be done by July 12th and the generator needs an oil change mm -hmm. every like 100 hours or less mm -hmm. like you know yeah. so that's another expensive yep. terribly complicated piece yep. that I would not replace yeah like you're getting this yeah. machine ready for a trip uh -huh. too Oh yeah, um, that's a hard part. Yeah. yeah, that's that is what you have to do. Because I think, I think, I think, in the previous podcast we talked about the evolution of camping. Yeah, where it's like I had started with like the pop top yeah. type of camping, and I know ease of use is a very important. Oh yeah, factor in whatever gear you have too. Because mm -hmm. if it's like I have to drive an hour to the shed to pick up this camper and then drive three hours the other way mm -hmm. to get to the spot and then it's you get off on a friday or you're trying you know it mm -hmm. needs to be it can't be like a spontaneous decision yeah um but we have sort of a machine that can you can do you can be spontaneous, spontaneous yeah but the to keep it at that point you have to maintain of it. Potential spontaneity. Yeah. yeah. It's like we have to consistently make sure it is mm -hmm. ready. Which I think yeah. I think that's a little bit easier for us because we use it as like one of our vehicles too. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same as like a camper that you're like storing, even that's if true. you are storing it on your property and then you go and you're like, oh, we have a camping trip this weekend. Hopefully mm -hmm. everything's good. And you go check on it and you're like oh, That's the power is not working or something like that because we are in it like Rat every chewed. single day. Rat chewed through the right. table. Yeah. yeah, so not going to run into as many issues like that. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah, that um, is a benefit. So. But also for a van trip, um, well, really for either trip, uh, I would start planning what we might do. So I'll look at like if typically we're going on a type of trip where we're going to be outdoors and See, so i start i've looking never had at, an indoor van trip well you know what i mean <laughs> like well like when we went to europe it was kind of city. like city yeah mm -hmm. but usually we're going somewhere where we're going to go hiking yeah. so i start looking up like trails we could do um sometimes we stay in like if it's a bigger park different parts of the park and so figuring out what trail we can do what mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. um and things like that like the what to do and then the packing list for a van trip is totally different than like a flight mm -hmm. trip. So mm -hmm. I just have to, I have all that like categorized like stuff for um, like bedding, kitchen, food, um, like hygiene stuff. And then like our normal packing mm -hmm. stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, lots of. You got those little tiny towels. For showering in the van, and mm -hmm. then they're like quickly, quick, quick to dry. dry. Yeah, those mm -hmm. don't take up any space. That's also mm -hmm. there are like things specific. I like to, traveling. Like I'm yeah. more comfortable. Well, it's a double edged sword because I'm more comfortable in the van when we're traveling because you like you have all your stuff like. Mm -hmm. Right you know, of. yeah, like I know that I have a towel. I know that have, have basically everything that I would need. It's like a hotel on wheels, right? And things that you just like keep in it. And then when you're packing for like a flight, you know, you're kind of limited in what you can bring, especially with your like camera equipment, you know, like you have to condense it all into, which you already you said that you try to do that anyways, but it is easier to do when you're just like, getting on the van and no one's mm -hmm. going to be asking you if your bag really fits, you know, nope. or if there's lithium batteries and all that stuff. 
Um, we're talking but about planes. It, we're talking about planes now. Planes, yeah. For planes, that's the stressful part of like traveling with the camera stuff. But also, mm-hmm. the van trip is more st- stressful in a sense of, or not easier because it's just like work like it's a lot of work like you're you have to drive park eat you know there's just like Mm -hmm. a whole process and anytime you stop you know put the put the bed down you know there is like a process to living in the van for an extended period of time where you don't necessarily deal with that if you're flying and staying in hotels Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and with the van and i i try not to I'm not the reason I don't get involved in the planning. One, it would be more complicated if I yeah, had like an opinion. Yeah, it would just get in my way. But also, too, it's fun to be like, it's f- fun surprised. to be surprised. Yeah. Where it's like, where are we going? And it's like this thing. And it's like, oh, yeah. And yeah. Then, and so, I'm like, look at the spreadsheet. Yeah. I sent it to you. <laughs> yes. You send me everything. But You're like, I, where are we going? But then I want to be like surprised. <laughs> yeah. And that's always fun because then mm-hmm. it's like, I didn't Google this image first, I saw it. Yeah. These waterfalls or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. that was Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, that mm-hmm. trip a lot. Where it was mm-hmm. like, this waterfall, this waterfall, this. Oh, and for trail. that trip, mm-hmm. I had got a book that basically like described oh, yeah. every single mile marker and like what you could do mm-hmm. there and like details about it. And so that, that was cool. Was perfect because I barely even, I did do like a spreadsheet like I normally mm-hmm. would for a van trip. However, I wasn't as stressed about like really planning everything because I was like, well, I'm just going to look at the book and pick yes. pick something out. Because the Blue Ridge Parkway is full of those little weird surprises. Yes, all along the way. All, Overlooks. And so you can't yeah. really plan that out to the, you just have to start at the top and go to the bottom. Right, that's the point. And <laughs> it's, it's, you, it's also, I don't know how long it would take to stop at everything, like how long the trip would need to be. Mm-hmm. To actually see everything along, because by then the tr- leaves will be well. If you gone. actually did the hikes and stuff, you would Forever. need years. <laughs> well, then there's yeah, Great Smoky Mountains is where we went into as well, and that was like not a part of the. It's not a part Blue of the Ridge parkway. Yeah. Parkway, but yeah, yeah. Because I was like, yeah, but well, that's a whole. But we spend park. time in Shenandoah too Shenandoah on that well. same trip. Yeah. So that's what I'm guilty of is like trying to pack it all, pack it all in. Yes. But then, yeah, that trip was amazing but it's the worst one i've planned as far as being exhausting uh-huh we yeah. no breaks no yeah. time to reflect. i remember getting back from that and we were just like yeah what just happened it was too madness yeah <laughs> um i mean it's fun it was just like oh yeah if you watch the sharp top mountain video that is the explanation of like the feeling because it's like we have to get up to this mountain before the sun before sets. the sun sets and then you also were, we're not staying here tonight yes. we still have to drive to our campsite and you were like should we get headlamps i was like no we don't have time to go back for the headlamps but then on our way back was it's dark. dark so then yeah it's yeah. that kind of decision making that happened the whole time it was like right do we have time it's like technically we don't have time for any of this for any of it yeah so do we we really shouldn't be eating yeah <laughs> should we, we i don't know how we had time to eat yeah. No. Yeah. So that's we've. So had that's it. something I've learned yeah. in organizing mm-hmm. is that for van trips from here on out, I am going to be planning more of like stops. Like we're stopping here and we're here for a minute, yes. kind of having like a home base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully that's the Yellowstone situation. Yes. Because that's that's, that's animals, how I'll plan Yellowstone. Animals and they come up to you. But mm-hmm. this isn't like I mean, weekend camping is really not a whole lot to it with the van. No. So that's why we're talking about the bigger All I have to do is book it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're talking about the bigger trips mostly yeah. though. Because like the van is its own self contained mm-hmm. machine that we just if we want to go out for a weekend thing, it's mm-hmm. like a sandwiches. Yeah, and for us, it's like low stakes, so I don't feel like I have to like mm-hmm. figure out where we're gonna go hike and all that. But like, when I go camping with like my friends, mm-hmm. I do get a little more stressed out about camping because I'm like, okay, well, I want us to like, I want to know that we have something to do, mm-hmm. so I do spend more time like figuring out hikes and some of those details. Where yeah, like weekend camping for us is just like. Let's go here. Yeah. Yeah. So that is interesting. 
uh, planes. So we got to kind of cover that. It's just yeah, mm-hmm. it's just different in that it is less, a little bit less planning. Like, it's destination because we don't. The biggest road trip we did with after a plane ride was Europe, mm-hmm. and that was like we drive across three countries. Yeah. And end up here, and then we return the rental car. That yeah. That was like a point A, point B thing, too. But yeah. That was, I mean, the, the whole organization kind of, of that trip needs its own episode. But. Yeah, for sure. But. That, it's, step one for that one was studying that's, German. That's an advanced type of organization yeah. where you're booking in another language. Yeah, but. So, but what? That was cool. I know, but I just feel like you brought that up a lot. Um, I, yeah, I'm i going to bring it up every chance I get. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> one was fun. Because it was also like planning the public. Because we had a rental car for some of it. We mm-hmm. had public, like we had tickets for like public transportation. Passes for public transportation. It's similar to Alaska in 2021. Right. Where you, we get there and we're literally like taking a car and then a train and then a plane yes and then a bus yes and then a boat yep yeah and that was really cool Mm -hmm. um but yeah no there is no ocean too large or Mm -hmm. mountain too big heather will just fly over it yeah or drive through it yeah she can plan it anyway and i know that there are some simpler ways to do that like well, probably. Europe is... Walking. Not... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Europe is not super difficult to navigate as far as no. getting from one place to another. It is very transportation friendly. Yeah. But I just can't handle the, like, not knowing. I'm like, I need to know that I can get on this mm-hmm. bus or this train at this time. It's like every five minutes right. in Switzerland. But it was perfect because most of the places that we were visiting had like a pass. So like you just pay for a, a tra- public transportation pass for like X amount of days. And then you can just use buses, right. trains, mm-hmm. whatever. Have fun. Yeah. But I didn't have to go and be like, we will be on the train at this time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for most of it. Yes. Which is true. good. You get a QR code for a couple of days and then you yeah. just can do whatever. Yeah. Right. That's... The Swiss pass. Because Alaska was more mm-hmm. extensive and like, we have to be on the bus at this time. Individual The tickets. train is at this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of different mm-hmm. in do you ha- We had it. to check in. Do you have your tickets for this thing, for this thing? For mm-hmm. the- it wasn't all one app or mm-hmm. one. Oh, yeah. and Europe was also complicated because a lot oh. of the passes that I had to get were specific to like a mountain range. And oh. so I was also... Mm-hmm. You know, booking funicular rides and cable car rides and all all of that. So yeah, that one is that one needs its own episode. That's what I'm, I'm going to stop talking about That's it because that is insane. It you're it's like stirring up. Oh no! What we don't need that a spiral. Was like, I'm not going to spiral. It's just like imp- I'm impressed with myself right now. Well, that's why I keep bringing it up. You're like you already brought that up once, and I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, because it's absolutely insane. Uh, insane in a good way. Mm-hmm. Insane is in unbelievable. Um, so yeah, planes, whole basically, it depends on. Where basically, we're going. we just have to figure out the biggest yeah. thing of our yeah. plane trips is figuring out how we're gonna fit everything in our luggage because oh, right. one of our bags will always be dedicated. One or more of our bags will always be dedicated to camera equipment. I might need it. And so you would do need it. Like you mm-hmm. use it, utilize it. It's not something I'm upset about because it makes sense. And but everything's just so big. But exactly. It's yeah. like you also have to like bring normal mm-hmm. things. Unless, I mean, I could <laughs> use my cell phone, I know, but. No, thank you. But um, I'm not going to. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The TSA is, mm-hmm. is multiple run ins with. Yeah, talk mm, about how you organize your. Camera stuff for trips. Mm, I'm very interested. Well, it's as much as I can bring within the bags that I have. And Mm -hmm. then, oh, yeah, clothes. Yeah, literally shoved in at the But secret, if you're going to a cold place, you can just have your jackets with you. And I have jackets with big pockets. So Mm -hmm. I would sometimes, all the time, fill in those pockets with things that maybe won't fit in a backpack or something. Mm -hmm. And so it's like an extra... 
not a bag. Carry on. But it is. It's yeah. two jackets. It's like, they don't say anything about jackets. Yeah. And so I fill the pockets up mm-hmm. with cameras, cam- batteries, <laughs> yeah. lenses. But so I am, there's probably never going to be any evidence of this, but the way I look and walk around like an airport is just like a madman. The whole time, I, my, anxi- that's why I hate flying. Mm hmm. Is my anxiety is always maxed out in an airport because I'm always until we are mm-hmm. on that plane. Even when you're on the plane. Even when we're on the plane, you've when had a, a situation. Yeah. Once so you take off. Once mm-hmm. you take off, I feel safe because there's always that possibility. Because every airline is different. Because I'm not like loyal to a certain airline. Because I literally just book mm-hmm. whatever makes the most sense for like mm-hmm. the time that we have. Mm-hmm. And so. I'm not just going to go American and then have to leave at 8 p.m. or whatever, you know? Right. And so every airline's different. Every airport is different. And there's always that scariness of like, oh, this is gonna, this was okay here and not okay here. And then we have to unpack all our bags and repack things, which we have had to do. And it's stressful. So with each new experience we have it ultimately comes down to like well it depends on like is like how do you be organized and it's like well each new yeah trip brings up its own set of issues right yeah it's like we just add on we slowly are taking on newer issues where it's like it's just flying that's our biggest thing yeah but we're eliminating but things too then it's like this is a new language and then you get to that point where it's like i don't know what that sign means does it mean wrong way or does it mean no parking (laughs) because yeah yeah (laughs) but being able to just kind of move through these things as they come up is a very important skill about organization because what Mm -hmm. your plan the more complicated a plan is too there's more that can go wrong. Right. Like, even... Yeah. I think that it is important to be organized, and that is how I choose to do all of this. Yeah. But it's just as important to be flexible. Mm-hmm. Well, it's sort of like setting a vision statement. It's like, let's maintain as close as we can to this thing. The point, the yeah. The plan, yeah. right? The plan that you set. It's like, all right, we're not eating here today because we didn't make it. Mm-hmm. Let's eat here. But tomorrow we have more... We have to make up for it or we have to slow down or, you know, we're Mm -hmm. moving too fast. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of like a gauge that you have on the trip itself. Yeah. And you're like, we were supposed to be there three days ago, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we're still here. So far we've done that on every big van trip Mm -hmm. because we've talked about that already. But like for the big one to like Yosemite and all that, we had to change our plans. Mm -hmm. And um, we only spent a day in Yosemite where we were supposed to spend like four days and then we spent more time in Death Valley than we were originally supposed to, and mm-hmm. it just changed the whole plan. And then, but we did that in on the Blue Ridge Parkway too because it was like day five or something, mm-hmm. and we had been in Shenandoah, and I think it was like the second day of the Blue Ridge, and we were just like, "This is ridiculous! Mm-hmm. Like we can't keep going like this, where it's just like driving two hundred miles in a day." You know, like we weren't doing, we weren't able to do anything. We were just driving, which is arguably kind of the point of Blue Ridge Parkway, but I can't do that. Like we need to stop and we need to hike and I want to do things and I want to go sit by the water and, you know, but But we stopped. And that was Boone Fork? Right. We stayed an extra night. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were originally only going to stay in Julian Price Campground or something like that. It's like um, closer north than south. Uh, along the parkway but uh less than halfway in i think but we were only gonna stay there one night and then we were like let's just stay two because this is ridiculous and then yeah if we wouldn't have done that then we would not have hiked boon fork trail which is my favorite favorite trail that i've ever been on Mm -hmm. yeah so so true yeah that's what i'm saying Mm -hmm. that's uh changing your plans Mm-hmm. is not always a bad thing. Yes. But you just have to know why you're changing your plans. Because mm-hmm. if it's not your choice, then it feels like a bummer. Yeah. But, if you, but that will happen. Yeah, because that's what happened with the and, Yosemite. And so being able to embrace that and then come up with something new, be like, yeah. especially when you're like adventuring through a beautiful place, it's like, oh no, we don't get to see this beautiful thing. I guess we'll have to settle for this other beautiful thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, 
that's what I thought of with Sequoia in Kings Canyon being like snowed out. Right. And then we just went to Yosemite. We got to stay at another place, Death Valley, longer. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, that wasn't so bad because I enjoyed staying at Death Valley for yes. longer. Right. And it might have been more overwhelming to try well, yeah. to hit two more national parks. Right. In that, that time, mm -hmm. in that same time frame. So yeah. then you can't really think of it as a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's hard to know, like, because originally on that trip, you know, I had planned like four days for Yosemite, I think like one day between Sequoia and Kings Canyon. And then I only planned one night in Death Valley mm -hmm. and then one night in Grand Canyon. And it was just like on the way back. Yeah. Like just kind of like, well, mm -hmm. we're already coming this way. So let's just check in. See ya. But sometimes it's hard to know. Like to me, Yosemite was like the end all be all. Mm -hmm. Like this is the our destination, this is what I want to see. I don't really care about anything mm -hmm. else. Four but the, the other things are like bonus. Yeah. But we weren't able to experience that. And don't get me wrong, Yosemite is definitely that type of place. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that Death Valley was also that type of place. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, oh, we'll just stop on by. Like it's just, it's just hot there. Like what's so special about it? And oh, that cool. place is incredible mm -hmm. and it deserves... A week there. Like, mm -hmm. it, yeah. Darwin Falls, Dante's View. Yes. The Salt Flats. Yes. Even, the Sand Dunes. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. that place was magical. And even outside of Death Valley, you have Rhyolith Ghost Town. Right. Or whatever, which is a cool place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So I can't believe that we almost Skipped just it. drove through it, basically. That's all we would have had time for, because it's, hu it's huge. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it takes an hour to drive from one part to another. Mm -hmm. So, so but about, sometimes it's hard to know that when you're planning. Well, yeah, you can't, you know? Know, you can't know everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, the more research you do, the more, mm -hmm. like, you could do all the research in the world and be like, we're going to do all these things. I see people ask on, like, the Facebook groups and stuff that I follow, and they're like, oh, I'm spending, uh, I'm visiting the Mighty Five, like this five in Utah, mm -hmm. and I have three days. And then everyone's like, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But it really depends on like what you're looking for because you can do that if you just want to see them. I just like, want a selfie. If you're okay, yeah. If you literally mm -hmm. just want to check that box, like that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but but then like, yeah, it's such a mixed bag in like the responses because people are like, you can't do that. And then some people are like, yeah, sure. Like here's this itinerary. Mm -hmm. But it's all kind of up to you like it's hard to know how much time you should spend there like mm -hmm. do you like would you think that death valley is a cool place or a place that you just need to drive through i don't know yeah this is the matchmaker app yeah that's where that would mm -hmm. come in handy yeah True. it's like do you like the hottest place on earth go to death valley if you go in december it's beautiful not that bad yep um still hot at times during the day but not yeah. I took my sweater off. That 112. Yeah, we took our sweaters off in Death Valley, so it was pretty hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I do have, like, what you're coming home to, but I want to talk about that right now. Okay. I was talking, thinking about how your intention for your trip is, like, what's your motivation behind actually going? Because if you do want to see something quickly then, yeah, you plan for a quick trip. But, like, mm -hmm. not everybody's schedules can right. do these things. Yeah. And the long, of course, you just, there's never going to be enough time. Mm -mm. But also, you don't want to, like, live there. Mm -hmm. So, how much, there is mm -hmm. enough time. There's so many things you know? that I, like, want to do, and it feels like you don't have enough time. Well, I guess that's life. But mm -hmm. I mean that in the sense of, like, I would love to do a van trip to uh, to Alaska yeah. and like experience that in the summer, but mm -hmm. I would need a month. Yeah. And it's like, I don't have that, mm -hmm. you know, ability. So you really, yeah, you do have to like just make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Like weekend camping trips or, you know, two week vacations or a month. It's all about what makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. And that changes for us. You know, depending on how many vacation days we have racked up, um, you know, like we won't be going on a big one for a while. Cause yeah, I know you keep saying that. Try to accumulate them, but yeah. Keep telling me that. No biggins. 
big giant trips, which is well, fine. we did get very greedy. Like we last year was cr- this. I was getting exhausted. This six months it was terrible. Was crazy. Like you we just can't do anything. It wasn't terrible. It was, it was terrible. amazing. It was the worst time. But of my it life. did. We just like turned around and <laughs> yeah. We flew too close to the sun, and so now it feels like, oh, well, we are not going to travel forever, but it's because we're we're traveling every two months, Mm -hmm. you know, which isn't normal for people with full-time jobs and a life, so we're pushing our luck. Shouldn't do that. It's time to take a break. (laughs) Yeah. I, I I don't think that's... Now, yes, there are people who travel all of the time mm-hmm. for work, but there is a place that you come back to. And I've always heard this, how I thought about this interview with this guy named, uh, it's like a YouTube channel called All Gas, No Breaks, and you just go around these weird places and interview weird people. But mm-hmm. he lived in like a camper bus mm-hmm. thing. And the biggest thing that he wondered about was like, I just want a place where I have like friends that I can visit mm-hmm. all the time and just have a place with people yep. to come back to Yeah. every time I'm done on the adventure. Cause like an mm-hmm. adventure isn't home. That's you leaving it. Mm-hmm. So if you constantly live in that place, it means that your home is not something that you want to come back to. Right. So you have Maybe, to, yeah. I mean, if, if I'm not speaking for everybody, but yeah, I wouldn't want to come back here if the roof was caving in mm-hmm. and there was just, dog just a million dogs somehow i just let you get a million puppies and i'm like i don't want to deal with all these puppies they you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i don't have much to complain about here is what i'm saying yeah it's good to have a home base i even Mm -hmm. saw recent there's like i don't remember who they're called but these youtubers that i've followed a little bit and they recently like they they got big from like being like van life, mm-hmm. and they've recently like announced that they're not doing that. Like they sold their van, mm-hmm. and they're like staying home. Mm. And they but they like live in a cool place, so it's easy enough to still make videos. Like Do you something. know, but yeah. yeah, but their reasoning was like that. Like they, it's nice to have something to come mm-hmm. home to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is a home for mm-hmm. you? It's like home is whenever I'm with you. Is that what it is? Sure. Or, I don't know. It's just good to have a roof over your head that, you know, doesn't need, um, doesn't need a generator or a sure power, you know, mm-hmm. doesn't operate on gas all the time. Yeah. I'm just lucky to have society mm-hmm. in buildings it would be hard <laughs> to film a podcast in the van too it that was a suggestion by a few people and yeah. i just thought about it and i'm like they're the it's not very oh big i don't know um we I, do have a video like doing a tour of mm-hmm. the van if you want to watch it but it's not huge 21 foot long <laughs> yeah uh, and just thinking about that just stresses me out where i can't even speak mm-hmm. uh <laughs> Like, we would just do it on the road. Like, we'd be traveling mm-hmm. and then stopping somewhere. And oh yeah, man, I'm not. Well, and then you'd have all your camera stuff and podcast equipment on top of that. Well, that's what Steve-O does, the, the jackass oh. guy. He mm-hmm. has a moving podcast type thing. Mm-hmm. And he just. Yeah, but he's so probably just, in a bus. Like, well, it is a, one of those, like, charter roomy. buses. Yes. Yeah. It, it has, like, 12 cameras and yeah. microphones and, yeah. Yeah. I get the idea. I think it is a mm-hmm. cool idea, but it's just not something I want to do. Do right what now. works for you mm-hmm. is what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing what works for me and us. Mm-hmm. And that is how we travel and organize for it too. And okay. how important is that to you to be organized? One out of 10. Organization to me makes me feel better so it's very important to me i would say eight out of ten because it hel- it just helps me mm. feel okay you know what's your 10 out of 10 oh what do you mean if organization is eight out of ten what's something that you consider to be 10 out of 10 in your life as importance 
Mm. Learning. You have a, a timeless priority. Mm-hmm. Mm. Why is that important? Um, similar to organization in that it's something that like I enjoy doing. Like it brings me happiness and makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's more important than organization to me because it also, which I guess organization does that too, but whatever, I get to pick the number. So, um, but it helps me in life, which so does organization, but yeah. Yeah. I think some people think it's when you've learned enough, that's when you, we run into problems when you think you've learned. I'll never learn enough. enough. Yeah. That's something from teaching that is still a part of me because when I was teaching, you know, you have all these like cutesy sayings about who you are as a teacher. And I would always say like, I'm a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. And mostly I was just saying it because that's like what you're supposed to say to like encourage kids to, you know, want to learn more. But that is really who I am. Like, I just want to keep growing and learning. In order to teach, you got to learn. Mm -hmm. um, you're bringing up teaching, though. Do you want to do a podcast on it? Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Maybe someday. Mm. Okay. you just come a long way. I think I'm ready, yeah. Since the first podcast, I think I might have brought up teaching. It's been a full, full year now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's long enough to get over anything. Not, there's nothing to get over. It's, just, it's not, yeah, I think I just it's feel... It's long enough to reflect on it. Yeah, I feel less, like, sad, mm -hmm. mad about it. It's are... more just, like, this is what it is, yeah. Mm, okay. So, yeah, that was a basic overview of organization. And, of course, mm -hmm. with each trip, we can get delve much deeper into mm -hmm. the insanity. Sorry. How... How proud I am of Heather's organizational skills. Mm -hmm. It's just worth putting up there on a pedestal because yeah. well, it is crazy. And if you, good, if you're a visual person, um, I did write a blog about how I planned the national parks extravaganza trip, which is like a 17 day van trip. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure it's called like how I planned a 17 day. Trip or something trip, yeah. um on our website but i like have linked pictures of like the spreadsheets and stuff and it goes through like the process cool so right it does have screenshots and everything mm -hmm. so if you want to visualize right if you're like what are you even that? talking about the spreadsheet this makes no sense to me mm -hmm. um i do have visual aids Blogs on that blog yeah on go there do that llc.com mm -hmm. so check it out I don't have anything else to talk about, do you? Mm, no, I'm good. Okay. Well, keep your thoughts organized, too. That's also important. Don't get distracted by things that <laughs> draw you off your path mm. because mm -hmm. that is what's most important is knowing who you are and what you want to do with your life and who you want to listen to, right? I think there's wisdom that can come from literally any human being saying anything to you so it is worth opening your ears and listening and learning anytime you get the chance, which is each and every day in each and every moment. And that is something that I am trying to practice, so I'm just projecting it onto everybody else mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's what I strive for. And you can call it manifestation or you can call it just me obsessing over something. But that's what I really want to do is learn more, just like Heather, so I can be as organized as she is. So, thanks for listening. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I bid thee a farewell. <laughs>